if you've got forward head posture, do this exercise. Lay on the ground and basically let your chest like really be on the ground, not like not like this, like just like this, right? So your chin's kind of like here and your arms just like bleh. That, see, see that you're not like holding them up. What you're gonna do next is very, very simple. You're gonna pretty much just keep your neck up, just like this. So that's gonna start to feel pretty, uh, yeah. You can do it kind of like this. And that's gonna really tax your neck muscles. I'll just move this so I can kind of. I don't even know, just make it a bit lower, you know? Okay, that's better. So, we are engaging the muscles at the back of our neck. And they're really gonna start to work. Um, I'll tell you, seeing as this is, you know, quite a boring thing to watch, I'll just tell you some things about the neck. <laughs> so this forward head posture concept is, is much more complex than people give it credit for. Um, it's uh, the medical industry or the physiotherapy industry, bunch of noobs. Uh, you know, they're kind of like, oh, that's because this particular section of muscles weak and this particular section of muscles pulling and this one's too tight and that one's too this and it's pretty lame. <sighs> yeah, the, the muscles in your neck, if you, if you take yourself out of the paradigm where you think muscles are simply connecting one bone to another, like... Yeah, you know, like, oh, you've got, like, we can, we can do the bicep or something. And, oh, yeah, okay, there's the muscle here. And, you know, it connects to a tendon and connects here. And then you've got these other tendons up here and here. And basically, it allows those bones to kind of connect and pull on each other. But the muscles don't just connect to the bones. They connect to the fascia. And the fascia is a like a sheet or a web that is all over your body and the muscles connect to that and seeing as the fascia is all over your body then if a muscle pulls on the fascia it doesn't just pull locally it pulls your entire body <laughs> like <laughs> from your foot to your for the to the top of your head you know from, from your toes to the very crown of your head it's it's all connected so that's one thing to know it it allows you to realize that there's not just some basic thing like oh this particular muscle's tight oh i think it's i think it's the levator scapula that's the one or it's my right trapezius nah it is totally systemic like a tight neck right you have to you have to really think about this like if, if your neck is tight all the time if your neck is sore and tight all the time what's going on like what is going on with your your life if your your neck is sore and tight all the time and most people might think oh it's just because i use the computer a lot. It's like, oh, I have to look down from my job. Congrats, that's a very simplistic view. <clears throat> okay, so after you do it for a while, you start to experience, ideally, if you've kind of like developed your ability to consciously observe your body to a high enough extent, kind of realize things, you kind of notice things just kind of like relax a bit. Like you might notice that, oh, I've been holding myself tight in this particular thing, pardon my 
thoracic spine or a shoulder or something and you might sense something and go Ugh. or you might go oh or oh who, who knows what it will be you don't know what it will be but just look out for it right so tight neck right you don't get a tight neck just from like some physical activity that you do if you're you know if you don't have a lovely uh, tall very relaxed posture that comes to you automatically and effortlessly That's not just a. That's not just a physical thing. Yeah, you know, if you're wondering why I'm talking slow, it's because like it's very hard to give my attention to both what I'm talking about and pay attention to my neck. Yeah, you know, I'm like focusing probably 75% of my mental capacity. So you should what you should be feeling predominantly when you're doing this exercise would be from the lower trapezius beginnings which could be around about here maybe around about there if you want to feel the lower trapezius you can kind of just while you're doing it you can go like this and go where is that you can put your, you know, your thumb kind of like on the, the muscle at the back and go, yeah, yeah, there. So predominantly, not entirely, like all the muscles of your back will, will work while you do this, but predominantly from your lower trapezius, all through your middle trapezius and upper trapezius, all of it. And then a lot of the muscles that come up anywhere above here, right? So you're gonna have that levatus scapula, which goes from your scapula up to your cervical spine on each side. And then just a whole bunch of neck muscles that are like attached from one point on the spine up higher to another point on the spine. And definitely you're gonna have muscles that come all the way from the pelvis and the lower, low, low, low spine, all the way up to the very tip of the neck. So there's a lot, there's a lot going on. And what you're trying to do as you just, while you do this is you're just trying to pay attention to what's happening. And you don't have to really try so much. One thing you definitely don't have to do. Yeah, there's no coherent message in this video. It's just a whole little, a little, you know, a whole bunch of little ideas. Um, you definitely don't have to try to squeeze your muscles to maintain this position. Just be like, I just want my head to be up like this. And that's, that's cool. You definitely don't need to be like, okay, so I'm squeezing that trapezius to maintain the position, right? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's just, it will work by itself. So at times you can experiment with like going up to a higher position and you can also experiment going down to a lower position where you say put your nose on the carpet or, or whatever that sounds somewhat sexual but you can just go put your forehead down but don't actually um don't actually put the weight of it on just like touch like this You can do a few reps if you like. Other things you can do are this, rotation. You can also, what do you call this? Side flex. You can do some circles. 
Try to do like really controlled, stabilized circles with a lot of intent. Not just like flailing around. Although, you can also flail around. If you flare around like this, you might notice it loosen up, but just be careful. Just be, but don't be too careful. Okay, let's look just like this. So, one of the principles that we're going to take advantage of here is when you start to do an exercise like this, like a static hold, the parts of your muscles, and I'm not sure about this, but it's possible that it could be the layers of the muscle that are closer to the surface of the muscle, you know, like not deep. Like they start working first. And after a while, like, you know, if it starts to hurt or it starts to get tired, you might get shaky or you might get quite sore or both. And then finally, deeper muscles will go, hello, I'm here to save the body. And it's like, those are the muscles, those are the muscles that haven't really been working so much. Haven't been doing their job. Yeah, the whole issue with postural issues in a way is that the whole body isn't checked in, only some of it is. Like just like tiny little sections of muscle you have consciousness of. Like if you're not conscious of your muscles, they're basically like shitty. So by doing an exercise like this, you become conscious of your muscles to just such a higher degree. Like they, all the neurons light up and you're like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, I sense it. And like af afterwards you get up and you're like, whoa, I can move so much better. And another point is, whenever you have, okay, I'll, I'll be more general than what I was going to say. When you get a pain in the body, and that could be a physical pain from an injury, be it like a traumatic injury, like bang, like a, like a, you know, sprain your ankle or something like that. Or it's just because you like mistreat your body and like just your repetitive strain, right? So that, that could be physical inju injuries. I'm sure there's other types as well. See, I just noticed that um, I, I just a little, like my shoulders just relaxed a bit. I was like, ooh. So, you can get a physical injury, right? You can get a, a physical pain or you can get an emotional pain. And in reaction to either an emotional pain or a physical pain, you change the position, the structure, the posture of your musculoskeletal system in some particular way. You could call this a compensation. Because you're like, oh, this part hurts or something bad is going to happen when I use this particular part or something like that. So then you change the way you do things slightly so that you can avoid that pain. It's kind of like um, analogous to life in a way. Change the way you do things in order to avoid particular pains. Ugh, this is like, ugh. Whew. Do a few deep breaths. Like. Blow it all out.
So then your body is working in a different way, but because it's working in that different way, okay, now something else is gonna hurt. So to avoid that particular pain, you compensate in a different way. And then that new compensation causes some new pain and then you compensate in a different way. And basically what happens is, in my perspective, it's not science, you, you stack all these different compensations on top of each other, right? You just keep stacking a bazillion different compensations on top of each other. Like for me, for example, like I, I sprained my ankle when I was 16 and I also hurt like some tendon or something in my knee when I was about 20. And let me tell you, I definitely made some compensations about, the, about that. And also definitely like, I have this theory that like, you know, sometimes when you have like an emotional experience, your body will send down the chemicals for that emotion. But if you don't want to feel it in the time, like you literally change the position of your body to avoid the emotional chemicals. And that sounds weird. That sounds like, what? <laughs> but like, imagine, like, Im imagine you have a situation where it causes an emotion, but you choose not to experience that emotion at the time. Okay, how? How? Well, you think with the power of your mind, you're, you're just, just your mind suppresses it. You know, emotions are physical. It's like a, a matrix of complex chemical interactions in your body, right? So if that, you know, experience or um, interaction, chemical interaction perhaps doesn't take place, well, how is that 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 happened? And it's my theory that you literally move your body out of the way and that's how emotions come to be like repressed, right? Like they stay in sections of muscles where you've like stopped moving. You like moved it out of the way, moved your muscle or body out of the way to avoid the emotion chemicals. And then you, you, you're like frozen in that section. And that's like, you know, it's very, very similar to when you have like an actual physical trauma or a physical you know, repetitive strain thing. So both physical pain and emotional pain, you do these compensations to avoid and then you need to avoid, you know, because you've done a compensation and that's wrong, that creates pain and then you need to compensate, compensate, compensate. And you get all these different compensations and eventually you get fucked up posture. <laughs> eventually you reach a point where it's fucked up and it's not just like one particular muscle here is sore. You've got all sorts of fucked up things going on. That's why you get like these, you know, common things like the whole anterior pelvic tilt thing. That's not just because of one thing, like the hip flexors are tight. Oh, the hip flexors are tight. Anterior pelvic tilt. No, it's a whole systemic thing. It's a whole systemic thing and everything's frozen and locked up and the hip joints are like, Ugh. same you get like rounded shoulders, forward head. That's not just like, oh, some particular muscles tight. No, there's a whole thing going on whether there's a whole massive network of complex emotional interactions or just emotions that you're avoiding or whether you've had some particular trauma somewhere else, you know, like that there's these polarities. If you have, if you have had injuries in your feet or knees or stuff that can cause things in your neck, you know, absolutely. So, Yeah, I, I guess that covers the point that sore neck isn't just like, oh, one particular thing's tight because of this tiny little reason. And the reason why this static hold thing can work so well is it forces the parts of your muscles that haven't been working to start working. And just by the fact that the muscles are turned on for so long and start to feel so much you'll become more conscious of them and when you become conscious of them you become able to move them and when you your your body starts moving again when your musculoskeletal system starts moving again instead of being stiff like it was before you know bad posture is always accompanied with stiffness and there's no one with bad posture who's like i have terrible posture but i'm also a world-class gymnast and move around no you start moving again and those pains, whether they're emotional or physical, can start to actually, you know, you, you, you strip one 
compensation away after the other until you get down to the very core of it. That's why like, you know, I've noticed over the year, over the past year or so since I've been doing this stuff that I'm working towards the, the deepest pains. <laughs> you know, like I've just started getting like the, the knee injury and the ankle one. Like just recently, I'm just getting towards like my hip flexors and lower back, you know, and lower back, they, they say that you can have like, you know, anxiety and I'm sorry, fear rather, or anxiousness, whatever fear. Let's, let's call it fear, fear and anger, like buried in the low, in the lower back. People will take this for granted one day. Okay. So then afterwards you can relax. So we'll stop it here and you can relax like this. Or you can relax like this. But make sure you do it. Like take take 10 minutes to just relax and let that all kind of like work its way through your body. Okay, see you next time.